I want to make sure I'm really clear about my stance on different hearing aid technology levels. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 202, and today I'm going to be clarifying my statements about different hearing aid technology levels and which technology level you should really be going with. But before I get into this video, do me a huge favor, click the like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It is greatly appreciated. So let me kind of rewind here a little bit. Um, a couple of years back, and I want to say probably four or five years back, I actually read a research article by the late Dr. Robin Cox that was talking about the differences between different technology levels, so premium level technology and basic level hearing aid technology, and determining like is there actually a benefit of going with premium devices versus more basic level devices? And this, this article really resonated with me because you know in the past, uh, as a student, I was always trying to identify what's the potential best technology level for a patient that I see. Uh, should I be recommending premium level? Should I be recommending mid-level? Should I be recommending entry level devices? And really what it came down to is that I was trying to use their, their, uh, their, the complex nature of their listening environments, meaning are they going out and being really social? Are they someone who just sits at home all day and just wants to talk on the phone and watch TV? Like there's different levels of complexity that a lot of people have when it comes to um, which level of hearing aids, which level of technology they should be getting with their hearing aids to help them hear their best in those particular situations. But the, the reason that this research article resonated with me is because, you know, there were individuals that uh, essentially did better with premium technology. There were individuals who said that they did better with basic technology in this particular research study. And so really the result of the research study was is that there was no statistically significant difference between individuals who wore premium technology and individuals who wore basic level technology. As long as they were being fit following best practices, which I talk about at nauseum on my channel, then people were able to get a good amount of benefit from premium and a good amount of benefit from basic level hearing aids. But the thing is, is that there were some people who got better performance with premium. There were some people in certain situations that got better performance with basic level hearing aids. And so it really comes down to the question of how would we determine which technology level is most appropriate for you when recommending hearing aids? So my stance for the past, you know, I don't know, five or six years since I really started my clinic uh, back in 2017 was, you know, I'm going to recommend to individuals that, you know, hearing aid manufacturers have different levels of technology. Each time that you go down in technology level, it takes features and customizations away from me as the hearing care professional when I'm trying to fit and optimize those devices. Now, it does not guarantee that if we go from a tier one down to a tier two or a tier two to a tier three, that you're going to be losing performance. There's just the potential of you leaving benefit on the table. So my recommendation is very similar for everyone. You go at the highest level of technology that you can reasonably afford. If you cannot afford it, you go down to the technology level that you can afford, and that's the one that I should be getting the most out of for you. With that said, there are several outlier situations where if someone comes in, let's just say, there, I actually had this example this last week. I had a patient who came in who's 100 years old. All she really does is sit at home, um, you know, communicates with family, but she does have a lot of family members coming over periodically. Uh, they essentially, a lot of her family members live in the area. So had her come in, evaluated her, I was only able to essentially measure four different frequencies on each of her ears because she was not capable of performing the full test battery. Uh, word recognition scores were incredibly low. I'm talking like 20 to 30% in that range uh, in each of her ears individually and not any better than that when it came to binaural testing for this individual. And so really when it came down to it, I'm like, okay, you know, should I be dispensing like the highest of the high technology to this individual when I know that there's limitations on performance benefit with this person? So I ended up actually recommending our lowest entry level option for this patient because I didn't see that she would likely get a substantial amount of benefit from the premium devices versus the basic devices. But you know what? 
I still don't officially know. I don't know. She may actually come back and report, or her family may come back and report that, like, actually she does better with the premium level hearing aids. So what's the only way that I could actually uh, determine if premium or basic would be better for this individual? Well, uh, some people like to think that, oh, Cliff, if you just do a really detailed case history, you find out specifically what that individual's wants and needs are, and then combining that with the audiologic data that you have obtained through your hearing test, that you should be able to provide an individualized recommendation for that person. And I would argue that that is literally not possible. We have no way of knowing whether or not someone would do better with premium or whether or not someone would be adequate enough with basic or mid-level technology. There's not a research study out there that says, oh, ask these five or 10 or 15 questions and that will guarantee that that person will do better with a specific technology level. It doesn't exist. So I can't necessarily go and just say, oh yeah, you should be going with you know, second tier or third tier technology based on the things that you're telling me. Not possible to know. Um, let me give you a for instance here. I had a patient back in literally my first year of practicing um, that came in and they essentially had an insurance benefit that covered a certain level of technology. So during the consultation, I basically was making the determination based on their lifestyle if that level of technology that was within their insurance benefit was appropriate for them. And I determined that, okay, it seems as though this technology level would be appropriate for you based on the types of uh, listening situations that you find yourself in. So I ended up dispensing these devices to the individual. This individual has uh, been wearing them for a year and a half, two years at the point where they came back in and said, hey, um, uh, I'm at the end of my warranty. I would like to have my devices sent in for end of warranty refurbishment, which is something that we do all the time. And in the interim, I ended up fitting this individual with demo devices uh, that were a premium technology. So instead of a mid-level, they were a premium level technology. And uh, so he could get through a week or two while his devices were in for refurbishment. So he comes back into the clinic and is like, hey, just to let you know, I was hearing way better with these loaner devices that you fit me with versus the entry or the his original devices. And there was nothing wrong with his original devices. We were just sending them in for refurbishment. Um, the loaner devices, essentially, the premium level devices, I had just uploaded his settings directly into. So it wasn't like I fit them, you know, more spectacularly well even than his actual devices that he owned. And he reported the same thing when he got his devices back. He's like, these just don't sound as good as the loaner devices that you fit me with. And so he said, what, why is that? And I'm like, well, the only thing that I can determine is that the loaner devices were a premium level hearing aid, and the devices that I originally recommended and dispensed to you a couple of years ago were the actual uh, basic level devices, or rather the mid-level devices of the same exact make of hearing aid. And he's like, well, why didn't you give me the option of going premium on that? I'm like, well, based on everything that you told me, I felt like it wasn't appropriate to fit you in premium technology. It was also outside of your insurance benefit. And he's like, Cliff, what makes you think that I wouldn't just want to pay for the highest level of technology? I drive a freaking Jaguar to your office every day. And in case you guys don't know what a Jaguar is, it's like a really, his car uh, was a, a really high-end Jaguar uh, automobile. And, um, you know, it probably spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on this vehicle. And, and he basically got upset with me because I had made a determination that the most appropriate and economical option for him was to go with mid-level technology. And so, uh, and, he, and he got upset with me about it. And so, and I really lost him as a patient because of it. And so then it came down to, I'm like, okay, I've got to figure out what the heck is going on here because I've been trying to be there a responsible audiologist and not recommend above what I think is reasonable for the patient based on their insurance coverage, based on cost to benefit analysis and all of that. And it still comes back and bites me in the butt because again, we have no way of knowing uh, for sure which level of technology is the best for anybody, right? And so what I did is I actually ran some case studies. I had essentially four individuals and I get that, you know, if I was a research audiologist, I'd want to have like dozens or, you know, a hundred different participants in my study that I could use and have everything like perfectly organized and, and all of that. But so what I did is I just ran some in-clinic 
case studies. So I basically had individuals come in and I essentially uh, did a thing where I fit you know, them, uh, half of them with premium technology first and then half of them with, with uh, uh, essentially advanced technology. So one step down from premium. And, and then I, I tested them for two weeks, right? They took them home, used them. I didn't like tell them which technology level that they were in. They came back in two weeks and I essentially converted their programming over to being the other technology level. So the, the advanced went to premium, the premium went down to advanced. And I had essentially done a bunch of questionnaires over the course of this time period. I'll link that video in the description if you wanna see my entire methodology with these four case studies that I did. And every single one of the individuals uh, they preferred the premium level devices and they were blinded to which ones that they were picking. Um, and so from that point on, I'm like, hmm, I cannot reasonably predict if they would do better with premium or advanced or basic. So I need to really change the way that I'm approaching this. I really need to make it the patient's option of which devices they would ultimately go with. And that has, is what has led to my current level of recommendation of technology level. Because I want to be sensitive to the idea that someone might not be able to afford premium level technology. I also want to be sensitive to the idea that someone might not know what they're missing between premium and advanced or basic. But here's the other thing. You might be thinking like, well, Cliff, why don't you just test everybody? Like, why don't you put them in premium, put them in advanced, put them in, in basic and put them in entry level devices? Because a lot of these manufacturers have three to four different tech levels. I'm like, okay, that is, that's probably the best way that we would know how to actually evaluate what technology level someone would do well with. And so um, here's the problem. I actually have a colleague who, who does this from time to time. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to let you try both of them. You know, let me, let me spend the time to do things the right way with both entry level and basic uh, and premium and let you go and, and try all of it. And so he does that uh, occasionally. And he just posted a, a comment in one of the forums about doing it. And he ultimately, uh, with the patient, the patient really ultimately determined that he felt that the premium level devices gave him a significantly improved performance, particularly in his vehicle when he's trying to hear the radio and have conversation in a, in a vehicle. And so he ultimately made the decision to go premium for that individual. And I'm like, that's great. Now you know for that one individual that they would prefer premium with all the premium features and adjustability of the premium devices. For whatever reason, that individual preferred those hearing aids and how they were able to be set up compared to lower levels of technology. But the argument that I pose with that is that if I were to actually test everybody on all these different technology levels, we may find that a percentage of individuals who are getting premium would actually do okay with basic level technology. And we would probably identify people who would prefer basic level technology from a cost savings perspective, actually preferred the premium enough to pay for that upgrade in the technology. The problem with that is, is that the amount of time that that would take to test every single patient on multiple technology levels to to really find out what's best for them is not feasible. You might as well just go with the premium level technology because that would ultimately come out as being as much or maybe even cheaper as what it would cost to literally take up an audiologist's time to evaluate these different levels of technology. So it really just kind of brings me back into the same line of thinking, which is, do I think that there's a probability or even possibility of someone wearing premium level hearing aids and having them outperform basic level hearing aid technology? I would say that it is more likely than not that current level technology today, because when you look at the Robin Cox study, that was from what, over 10 years ago that that study came out? I would make the argument that with premium technology, you have a better shot of maximizing performance than you would lower level technology. And so it really just comes down to, can you afford premium? And if you cannot afford premium, then you have to go down to a lower technology level anyway, but it's still the job of the hearing care professional to optimize that technology for you. So I've really, as you can tell, I've put a lot of thought into my technology recommendations. And there's a reason why a lot of my patients come into my clinic and want premium. Essentially, they find me because they're like, you know what, um, I've struggled other places or, hey, I've been watching a lot of videos and being educated and I don't really you know, trust going anywhere else. I wanna either come to you or go to one of your providers in the Hearing Up network. And so they come in with this, like, I just wanna 
get the best of the best. I want to maximize my ability to hear and whatever you recommend and go with, that's what we'll go with. And so it ultimately comes down to like, well, hey, if you can afford the premium, you might as well go with the premium because between now and even five, seven years from now where you're still wearing these same hearing aids, if you're, there's a feature that we don't have in them if, because you go with a, too low of a level and we need that feature in three years, guess what? You're paying for a whole new set of hearing aids anyway at that time. So you might as well go with the highest level to future-proof these devices as much as humanly possible because I do want to be economically responsible with my patients. Um, so this, this stance that I have, it ruffles a few feathers, not a lot of feathers, because honestly, if, if I had someone say, Cliff, you know, you gotta, you gotta make a more specific recommendation on technology level um, to make it appropriate for all of your patients, I would say, great, you tell me exactly what to do that can identify the perfect level of technology and then reference me to the study that shows that that's actually the case, um, and I will start doing that. I will happily start doing that. In fact, when I dispense a premium level hearing aid, I actually profit less on a premium level hearing aid than I would a mid-level or low-level device. Um, the margins are completely different. I actually have to spend a significantly higher amount of money to get a premium level device from a manufacturer than I do a lower level device, but I get better margin because there's a little bit better markup on the lower levels of technology. So it would actually benefit me financially to go with lower levels of technology for my patients. And I do that specifically to prevent the bias of me only recommending premium to make more money. And, uh, but, but here's the thing, I, am hap I would happily change the way that I recommend uh, my treatment or my technology level recommendation if someone came back and said, hey Cliff, here's a guaranteed way that you can select the most appropriate technology level for the patient without having to oversell them on premium level devices. And I would switch that so fast and I would make a ton of content being like, hey, this is how crazy successful this is because every person who comes in with the exact right technology level now and into the future uh, because we can predict into the future potentially, um, I would be really interested to hear what that message Method is. So um, if you guys have a hearing care provider who does an excellent job of recommending the appropriate technology for you, I would really love to know what that is and if it's being dictated by them or dictated by your insurance or dictated by your finances. Really interested to know what that is for you guys. Until then, I'm going to keep doing the same thing that I've been doing uh, that has amassed you know hundreds of reviews for me at this point in my clinic and that's recommending the highest level of technology you can reasonably afford and and if you can't afford it, you drop down to the level you can't afford, and then it's my job to get the most out of those hearing aids. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. If you did, again, make sure that you hit that like button. I really appreciate it, and as always, I will see you next week.